hundred percent. Music, music. One hundred percent. Music, music. One hundred percent music. Music. One hundred percent music. 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 And we're back. Sure. And we're back. <laughs> hey, what is what is that from? <laughs> It's Jimmy Fallon and Saturday oh, Night that's, Live. Of course, it it's is the radio course. DJ. And we're back. Great callback, Alex. <laughs> yeah. Love it. I think it was, we all knew it. I think it's topical. It was Ben Affleck, though. Is that? I, I'll be honest. I didn't hear what you said earlier. Was it? Did you point out that it was a Ben? No, Affleck I didn't. Episode? It was. It was Jimmy Fallon and Ben Affleck, and, ben Affleck and, they, and they were both the radio DJs, and they got in a competition of like who's. Yeah. And we're back. Yeah, because they were more important. Ben Affleck's is like, and we're back. Yeah, <laughs> we're back. But I'm not sure if the most people remember that skit, especially it's a, great a skit. younger generation. I great don't know. Skit. Great, great skit. Hey, we're back for episode two of the 100% Music Podcast. It feels good to be back. Feels good to have a show. Feels good to be in a band. Hey, back. It does. And I think it was a good way to start this one off as our cocktail of the week. Why don't you tell us about it? Yeah, we're jumping right into this one. Uh, the Kind of the theme of this episode is kind of green room amenities. And we're doing a writer list, baby. And on our writer number one, bottle of Mezcal. Usually it's Vita, which we, we love and appreciate Vita. Uh, we did step it up for this episode. We made actually Mezcal margaritas. So we're not drinking it straight like we usually do in the green room. We've uh, spiced it up tonight, <laughs> baby. We usually just chugging. Just just chugging. Chugging. Stop you right there. Chugging. Explain to the uh, butt that. chug in the <laughs> green room, man. As, uh, because this is one hundred percent music. Let's give them the nitty gritty behind the scenes of a band. What exactly is a rider? A rider is all of your requirements. You got your tech requirements. That's I would say requirements. <laughs> oh, your dreams. requests. <laughs> requests. <laughs> your requests. Yeah, a rider is not a requirement for a your band. Your goals. At our level. Your goals. Okay, it's um. It's your requests and dream wish lists. And so people sometimes, you see on the internet people, oh, I can't believe this band would ask for that. Oh, I can't believe it. things leak. They get put on Twitter. Oh, did you see their writer? Did you see all that so, it had? I, uh, some writers, for example, uh, bands have requested like literally puppies in the green room. I was about to bring that one up. because okay, Eric, Eric, as yeah. a music venue employee, you've seen a lot of this. My job was literally for a couple of years was to fulfill people's writers. I was a runner. Now and he has was, his own. Yeah, that's right. I've really <laughs> moved up in the come. world. Yep. To getting people uh, puppies to uh, getting hummus and LaCroix. Uh, big, yeah, big step up. But yeah, so we, um, so yeah, we'd see some crazy things sometimes. Like I remember, was it Scott Weiland needed a boom box? To practice his vocals with, Whoa. Um, sometimes he would sing along like to a the JVC, song, or? like a yeah, yeah, like a boombox, like one yeah. from the nineties, like where he put his compact yeah. disc in to like sing yeah, STP would, songs. Yeah, he would put in his songs and he would sing along to the boombox. While this is not that long ago, this was like you know there was definitely you know iPhones and things like that, but he just liked the boombox for whatever reason. We had a request I remember for. Um, for puppies before I can't remember the artist though. It's a great request. Who yeah, who wanted the yeah, and we actually I think we made that work with the the uh, Lawrence Humane Society. We were able mm. to uh, yeah, make I, something work with I that. I know uh, the band We Are Scientists do that, mm. or they did on tour. They would request dogs or puppies from whatever local shelters the dogs would get out. And, and get let, to let's be honest, out. when we're on tour. There's nothing better than a a, a dog a touch. dog sighting, yeah. a venue yeah. dog, <laughs> a, a venue. Every now and then we'll <laughs> come into a venue. Yeah, we love loves our, loves ourselves a little hot dog. Every now <laughs> and then you'll go into a venue that has like a venue dog, an owner or bartender has the dog with them, and that's always a good venue. Yeah, no, I mean it really does go such a long way. I think we're all big animal lovers here in Hembry. Mm -hmm. That's one of the cool things about us. We like dogs. We <laughs> like Everyone cats. Everyone knows that that's the cool thing. <laughs> yeah. about one of the things that people really love it's about very, very about unique us for a band to like animals. So. Honestly, like we like yeah. margaritas and we like animals. <laughs> we like Seinfeld and pizza. Yeah. Like we, we have a lot of unique things about us. But back to the writer. Yeah. So it's usually a request for things that you want, either musical things or food drink uh and our writer is usually pretty simple we're, we're not we're, we're not men we're, of simple means yeah we we like to keep it simple we don't want to become one of those bands that they're Green writer and leaks and everyone no oh, i can't believe him i do want the i like the fresh socks fresh underwear on the writer yeah, that's, great that's move. a great move yeah i remember i i worked for the band heim and that was that was one of theirs that was the first time i saw that and it was kind of weird but then when we started touring more no, i was like oh genius. that's genius yeah. i do remember yeah. and we can edit this out but i remember one show alex and austin's mom brought a fresh pair a fresh pack of underwear and austin and alex this is getting a little a little risky here. A little risque. <laughs> mm -hmm. They uh, they have different types of underwear that they <laughs> both wear. Well, his their mother brought 
Alex's favorite kime. We know it. And she said, we all know you it. have to share with your brother. Because <laughs> Austin said, well, where, where are mine? And, so we, uh, we share so our underwear. They share their so underwear I, went, underwear. I went commando on that tour. Yeah, yeah. Was, whole tour. I don't wear those small little tidy whities <laughs> that fit Alex over But it was there. so... I need the big boy. But that's I need the big boy <laughs> pants. Yeah. The big We're boy talking ends. about luxury. Luxury is br- a clean pair of underwear on tour. So my mom knocked that one out of the park, as weird as that one was. <laughs> yeah. yeah, feel free to take that out if you don't want to... No, uh, no, it's staying in. That's, staying no, that's, in. that's, classic, that's classic 100% music material. That's right, so right, right I, I think we should get back to exactly what we like yeah. to prefer on our, on our rider. rider. Because well, I it, think we're looking at a lot of it right here in front of us. Yeah. Hummus. That's a big one on our rider. Because usually you and roll into cow. a in Miss Cal, you usually roll into a venue sound check times kind of that in between. It's between lunch, between dinner. So you don't want a full meal. So hummus and some chips, mm, that sits just right before a set. Mm. So tonight we actually have four different hummuses. We're that we going will to be. do a little bit of a taste test, I think. A little, we'll a little hummus shootout, folks. And, and these are all of the Trader Joe's variety, because I was not about to go to multiple grocery stores for our yeah, podcast. Fair enough. TJ's is the best. It is a this, fantastic That's my store. If we have uh, Trader Joe's, that means we're playing in a city, which is <laughs> <Yeah>. nice. Because <laughs> a lot of the times... Sometimes yeah, that we're is... not playing in a city. <laughs> most times. So this is uh, so we're off to a good start right here. We've got Mezcal. We've got our hummus from Trader Joe's. So I the, think we're, we're in a good spot fantastic. here. Fantastic. The only thing that we've requested in the past that did not pan out for the band was... We got a little ambitious, and we we're like, "Wouldn't it be cool if we requested some sort of like natural or organic oh, wine?" Because we are California boys <laughs> now. Mistake. Should not have done that. They did not uh, understand. It's no. tough to roll into. Uh, not no, careful. 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 It's, 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 it's tough to roll into fill and blank here, and they don't have natural wines either in that city or even that area. Or, or never the, simply <laughs> heard of a natural or wine. that region. Yeah. Or that region. So sometimes we will roll into a box. That was that Boda box. Boda box, which I thought Boda was box. awesome. I was quite pleased with that personally. I don't mind a, a green room Boda box. I don't mind slapping that Boda bag all night. No, we play it slap the bag all slap night. Slapping the bag on stage. The bag on stage. <laughs> it's funny when I was. <laughs> we should do that sometime. <laughs> when when I was a runner and I was in Lawrence, Kansas, we didn't have Whole Foods, and I didn't realize how hard that would make my job because we got a lot of requests. It would, and we don't have Trader Joe's there either, and a lot of the requests would be specific things from Whole. Foods, specific things from Trader Joe's. Probably and coastal that, bands coming yeah, through or yeah, something. Yeah, and that too. would be, and I think they're like, oh, <laughs> everyone coastal. has a Whole Foods. Everyone He's has elite. a Trader Joe's. <laughs> So I'd have to get creative. I'd have to be on the phone with these people and just be like, well, does this look good? Does this look similar? Well, like a, we're, we're not Instacart, that picky. Instacart that's runner. why bands yep. need to be more like yep. real big yep. fish and order a bucket of chicken <laughs> fingers. That's a, that's a story for, for another time. Yeah. <laughs> or is it? <laughs> is it? Well, the question is here is we, we're, we're rolling. we got a couple segments queued up for you guys yeah. here on the 100% Music Podcast. None we, of them music related. None of them music related. <laughs> um, you know, as you know, we live in Los Angeles. Beautiful, sunny, but cloudy tonight, Los Angeles. Do we want to go ahead and knock out celebrity sightings? Because yeah. we talked about Scott Weiland and Real Big yeah. Fish. Yeah, Those are celebs in my book. If you want to hear the Real Big Fish story, you just just DM Hembry. Just let us know, and we will give you the whole the whole account. Or should we of do that. we save it for a future episode? Or is it inappropriate? It, we'll, we'll see how much we'll see how much buzz it gets. And if yeah. there's a yeah. chance that we still yeah. might tour with oh. real big fish oh, we no, don't no, want no. to give this oh they away. did they did nothing okay it's just it's like really funny it's re- no it's really funny they didn't i want to be clear they did not do anything they they did not do anything bad they they just did something really they just did something really silly they did something so classic yeah, yeah. rbf man they did classic real big fish on and us. that's no, no, today's no beef, no beef celebrity sighting oh must be burt reynolds or something my celebrity sighting for the week a fantastic one highly topical Foo Fighters have just announced a new drummer. Perhaps we'll discuss that. No, nothing. <laughs> oh, oh, you do want to do that now? No, no, no. We'll I was, I was leaving that. an opening for that, but we'll see. But why it. didn't you say who you saw? Because okay. it probably wasn't the drummer, well, because everyone sees this drummer so everywhere. So the drummer, as they were announcing the drummer in a quote-unquote, and I'm, this is not a knock because we've done something similar, and most bands did during COVID as well, as a quote-unquote live stream online, they were announcing their new drummer. The whole band was there. I saw one of the Foo Fighters members, and definitely not on the live stream, just hanging out in uh, our area, the, our neck of the woods, and it was Mr. Pat Smear. Nirvana. Arguably, <laughs> Arguably the maybe best the Foo coolest Foo Fighters. No, I don't want to say that. We love them all. We would go on a tour of Foo Fighters. That's not a knock, but Arguably my my favorite Foo Fighter, Mr. Pat Smear. I think it's pretty inoffensive to say that. Okay, I think I think think they'd think that was cool. Consensus. 
I think Dave Dave would be like good for you. Yeah, yeah. My, I like he's my favorite too. Yeah, I was okay. gonna say Dave probably thinks Pat's his favorite. Oh, he's got yeah. they go they have so much history. They have so much history. So he far looks back. the coolest. Yeah. Pat's Pat's he the best. He also always looks like he's flipping you off when he plays guitar. I don't know if you guys have That's noticed. His oh, look, yeah. 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 Oh, his finger yeah, position. I finger noticed that. position. Yeah. yeah. Pretty cool. Pretty punk rock, Pat. Yeah. So, meanwhile, was... during the live stream that wasn't live, they did announce the the new drummer of the Foo Fighters. Anyone? Anyone? Any guesses? <laughs> Any guesses? Who put them in the chat. Yeah, put them in the chat. Put them in the put chat. Your, put them in the put chat. Put your prediction for who you think the Foo Fighters <laughs> yeah, announced last week. Real quick, everyone, real quickly, <laughs> predict who the drummer is. <laughs> Al, you get one pick. Um, well, I was secretly holding out hope that it was going to be Austin. I thought <laughs> yeah. they were going to go Wouldn't for like a, cool? you know, yeah. a, a more unknown, <laughs> undiscovered. undiscovered artist. Talent. Yeah. So my yeah. my guess is is it's Austin. <laughs> Isaac, who do you think it was? I think it's John C. Riley from Step Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That'd Dale. Be Eric, who do you want the Foo Fighters drummer to be? <laughs> Ringo Starr. Love. Bring him in cool. the fold, yeah. baby. Bring him back, baby. He's still got the before. juice. Peace and love. Peace and love. Peace and love. Uh, my vote also would have been myself. Uh, or, <laughs> Ringo Starr. Or, or Samson or, Hellerman. Yeah. Or, or honestly, just kind of a, an unknown would have been kind of cool. Or maybe someone who's got a little pedigree, but like, Someone who, for the most part, this was a big move for them. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm still excited to announce right here, live. <laughs> exclusive <laughs> announcement. Exclusive from announcement. From last week. That the new drummer of the Foo Fighters is the one and only Josh Freeze. Woo! Woo! For those, Congrats, buddy. Uh, for those who might not know who Josh Freeze is, he's a phenomenal drummer. He has been in the game for a while. He's kind of known as the go-to hired gun drummer. Uh, me and Alex actually have seen him play live multiple, multiple times, times with multiple a couple bands. times with Nine Inch Nails. He played with Weezer for a couple tours. Mm -hmm. uh, he did uh, Devo. We saw him play with Devo mm -hmm. one time, actually. I think he's still in Devo. He is still in Devo. And yeah. he was just touring with the Offspring. Yeah, most Offspring recently. is most recently. He's busy also, boy. Yeah, he's a busy boy. He was also a founding member of A Perfect Circle, if that's anyone right. remembers oh. them. So I'm, that's right. We is saw him on Maynard? tour. That's Maynard. Uh, Maynard's band. Yeah, uh, we saw Troy him open up for Nine Inch Nails. So here's the funny thing. So right after they announced Josh Freeze, who to me, I, and this is no disrespect, but it was like, oh, of course, Josh Freeze. Yeah, that's not that big of a surprise. All these stories popped up online. Who is Josh Freeze? Here's what you need to know about Josh Freeze. And I, first of all, Surprising. it reminded me how big Foo Fighters is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like they are arguably maybe the biggest modern the rock band. The only. Yeah. <laughs> no way. Don't don't count out the dragons. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and and then secondly, it also made me forget. Like maybe we're just so up our own ass about the music industry that it was like people don't know who josh freeze is I, Dude, there's people walking through this world they, they don't they, know, they who, don't josh know who josh freeze is, freeze is i i don't i'm gonna I say know. i don't know i do not know who this person we got is a bandmate who doesn't know <laughs> yeah. who josh freeze is i've stop never heard of this episode. person Cut it. stop it canceled. for the third time but We're like canceled. but why would but, but you but know, I know his all music. his i know all of those bands that he plays with very very well that just shows you with a you band how hard it is to be like recognizable as not the lead singer of a band, mm. it is very, very rare that, to be is, that. Like, like who can you name right now that is like, like what Travis Barker? Well, that was you went yeah. where I was going. Like, that to me is what is astonishing about the band Blink One Eighty Two. Yep, you know them all. You know all of them equally. Who's the front man of Blink One Eighty Two? Travis oh, Barker. Three. Travis Barker. Travis Barker. Travis yeah. Barker is. He's the wealthiest, I'd say, at this point. <laughs> he might, yeah, yeah. He might be. For sure. That just shows you just though how rare that is for like a like a Beatles situation mm, or a yes. Blink one eighty two situation. Honestly, a Hembry situation. Are you talking about that concludes our celebrity yeah. sightings, yeah, folks. We'll have little. we'll have more later. You got your Foo Fighters updates. You heard it here first. Um we've Josh talked, Freeze, the new drummer. The new drummer, the new drummer of the Foo, Foo Fighters, Fighters announced here. Bye, Garrett. Uh, just like just like Foo Fighters, we have a writer. Theirs is probably more a little expansive than ours, but uh, we settle for things like hummus and mezcal. And I think we, this would lead us to a great segment here, fellas, where we uh, we compare the top four selling hummus, hummus I, the hummus I, it's just it's a couple of hummus hum <laughs> from Trader Joe's. And uh, we're gonna do an annoying little quick taste test here, and just kind of talk about the the flavor notes and our favorites. Tell us the four that we've got on the on the table. <laughs> All right, we have the very Zach? very revered roasted red pepper hummus classic it's highly, back highly they told me that today it's back it's I, been I gone like the, it's back sh is it shab shab shabra sobra sabra sabra, sabra. sabra. they make a sabra. great it, roasted it's pronounced roasted sabra. Sabra. sabra and then this is what got kind of like more of like a plain organic hummus solid straight it's to the very point good. solid had it 
This is a roasted garlic hummus. Mm. Looks kind of similar, but maybe a little bit of roasted garlic in it. You know, <laughs> it's hummus. It's safe bet. Yeah, but <laughs> roasted yeah, garlic. They all, all kind of look maybe. the same. Well, there's no only one way to find out. And then this one here, yeah, here's the, here's Mediterranean the. style hummus. This is this is the fancy stuff. You walk into the green room, mm. and you see this, this you, one right here. You know it's gonna day. be. You know it's gonna be a good show, because that really brings me. Because you know the green M M&M and M thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, the reason why they do that is not because they're like insane. It's because they when they see that they know that the writer has been fulfilled and there's and nothing they, else missing and they, they read uh, every runner word can of it. read yeah that they made sure that that, that everything because they say oh can read. if you walk in there and you said oh I only want the green M and M's and they are there and you have a bowl of green M and M's you don't need to look at anything else you know it's done that's yeah. amazing this runner can read this so, runner yeah, can so, read so if we don't see Mediterranean style hummus you didn't we're see flipping our- shit <laughs> we riot honestly we don't, we don't play that- we just don't play. I think we can agree, Isaac. We had this conversation where that might be the number one seed. That's in this the number one seed coming into this um, tournament bracket. Fans of the show have already weighed in, and they said the Mediterranean is the best. But you know, we give everyone an uh, equal shot that's here right. yeah. at Hembry Music LLC. <laughs> Are we going to do it like bracket style? Which, yeah, what, what's, what's, so, the, what's the four seed? So they're, they're like the plain one. Plain, maybe? plain for sure. So plain we got two. one, four. And then I'm going to say that the three seed here, just because there's just a touch of yeah. garlic, and then we're going to go with the, f- the, the, is this the two seed? The, three the seed. The two seed. That'd yeah, the two that's seed. the roaster red pepper right okay. there. All right, uh, you guys like get, this, uh, get, get a little hummus on those chips, okay. and let's get them in some mouths. I think we have the agreement we'll just eat slightly away from the microphone for the sake of all the listeners out there. While, while, one uh, seed. <laughs> Isaac yeah. and Eric are taste testing here. Uh, I will say about the the, the one seed, the, the number one the number one team thus far. There's a reason they sell it in the big tub. It that's only incredible. comes in the big tub. Oh my gosh, there, that's so and good. There's a reason. They they can upsell you for the big tub, not even give mm. you the option for the mm. small tub. The flavor palette on this is nuts. I'll tell you what, you go through that big tub every time. I, yeah. I, I, oh, I've, this right here in the I've green room? I've tubbed this guy several times. <laughs> I've tubbed Full it for tub. sure. Tub, right, tub something. Tub. You've chumba one, but this How many thing. ounces is that tub? It's at least twice as many Several. ounces. Let's as the other. see here. Let's see. Sixteen ounces. Damn. That's one pound of hummus. It's kind of right. cool. It's, it's kind of like them, double. They're them calling yeah. their shot that they're only going to mm-hmm. sell it in the mm-hmm. big container, knowing full well that everybody's going to pay for it and buy the. The big awareness container. that Trader Joe's has is. It's well, incredible. Aside from when they had the Trader Jose brand and they got called out for that, <laughs> yeah, that's they've learned. Well, yeah. if we're doing a bracket elimination right yeah. now, I can tell you with my number one. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's Take a bracket or elimination. To win. Mediterranean's moving on. Yeah, oh, yeah. Mediterranean's yeah. moving yeah. on. Okay, shut it down. We got the next game coming up here. <laughs> shut it down. <laughs> that's the thing is, the, you come mm. in, you say, "How's this band going to eat all this hummus?" You come uh, back you, in the green room after the show. This thing is depleted. Yeah, that's that's the thing. Pre-show, usually a little like the tops gone. Post show, that thing's gone. It's whoever gets backstage after the set first, they just top that thing off, no problem. Mm. Yeah, but yeah, like what I would say is that be the reason why we know that this is not a legit green room is because the opening band has not eaten all of oh, our right. snacks. It's still and here. And they are still here because generally we do our sound check. A lot of times we roll in and that shit is gone, and yeah. we are just it is a sad, yeah. sad moment. If you, a bottle like this. They're, they're not seeing that. No. That, we go first, in, that is, yeah. that's the an very Austin's first backpack. Thing, <laughs> the very first thing we do actually do when you enter a green room, is if you're sharing it with another band, is you find the bottle of booze that's on your rider, you grab it, you hide it. You put it in a backpack, you put it in your luggage. I put it in my empty dad's, my snare snare drum case. He puts it in his kick drum, he's sneaking <laughs> yeah. mezcal on stage. You have to hide it because it will be gone. If there's a local opener, and we've all been a local opener, yeah. I'm not dogging on a local opener. They assume that they're allowed to eat and drink the touring band's rider. Which brings up another interesting um, debate here. So a lot of the times when you play a show, they will offer you a rider, but sometimes they'll just offer you to take just money instead. Oh, okay. I don't know. If, I don't know if we have time to get into <laughs> buyout. Is, uh, or so offer. let's. So uh, I don't know. That's why. But I'm saying that that I'm saying that is why sometimes I'm like, you know what? It's sometimes that's the safe move. That is the yeah. safe move to take the money. The risky take move the money is, and run. is, yeah. Then like the, the kind of the high risk, you know, high reward sort of thing is like you could get an amazing spread, and you like you want that yeah. if it's good. But sometimes though, you don't know. It's a you don't it know. Is. It's you're, you're playing. Yeah, you're playing with fate there. One hundred percent music to, to dive into that a little bit. As Eric just mentioned, sometimes on the road when before you get to a yeah. venue, you are offered a choice as a band. Would you like to be paid roughly? And Ten. I don't know how they do the math on this. The, would you like to be paid the equivalent of what it would take us to stock your green room yes. with hummus 
beer, LaCroix, whatever you've asked for. Basically, do you want someone to go to the grocery store for you or do you want to go to a restaurant and then spend way more money on the restaurant <laughs> yeah, but then exactly. have like $14 in your pocket and maybe get one drink if at the If you're venue. lucky, the buyout is on average $7, I would $7. say. <laughs> I would say the average is $7. Well, they don't equate for inflation in the music in industry. In the only disagreements that I can think of in this band... Uh, there's been a couple of them, and one of them comes down to the buyout versus the writer fulfillment. And we will we will argue about this for the <laughs> lifetime of this show. Honestly, fulfill my rider. I want to show up. I've been driving for die, 24 baby. hours. I want ride something to die. drink. <laughs> I've been driving 24 hours to oh, this drive club. It. He drove all We've day, done it. Baby. I want something in the green room. If the buyout is 20 plus. If the if it's over twenty dollars, what go, venues you, are yeah. you playing? <laughs> <laughs> We've got twenty. Are you the kidding? Enormo Dome. Well, and I tell you we're what, back. Tour uh, tour talk is a great moving things along. Great segue into our other freak weekly uh, weekly oh. freakly. Well, hold on <laughs> now, buddy. Well, hold, on, hold on, real quick. We didn't we didn't finish the competition. Oh. <laughs> we all we're on. letting we're letting it I'm sit in like, our palates. Yeah, we're letting it <laughs> I, okay, we, should, can, we should come back. Can, can, I, can I say can I can I say that the red pepper the red pepper is is is, the, is my winner for these? Oh, I haven't for tried. Sure. Yeah, I, I haven't tried. Eric and I both voted the red pepper is superior. What do you? know the, the hummus that has more stuff in it <laughs> yeah, exactly. these two plain janes are out of here trash right. i don't think it's garbage hummus i think this is okay so i think if we let's just let's just wrap this up let's wrap it Can up we here. Just say this is this is just a clear winner it's a clear winner it's, I think it's, it's such a standout one. the fans said it from the get-go we should have listened listen yeah. to this it's mediterranean style hummus trader joe's really good stuff tj keep it up it's creamy and it's smooth. How do they do that at the same time? I do not know. I know. Um, but yeah, it's pretty magical. Check it out. I would say uh, I didn't even taste the other three, but I'm going to write that as my winner as well. Yes. And I, I, I don't know. I think this is a dangerous standard to set for taste testing moving forward, but we'll, let's let it slide on this one. Today's winner <laughs> number of the, one seed. the Hummus Shootout, the number one mm. seed. Sometimes the number one seed carries it all the way, just like the Denver Nuggets. All right. Mm. And that's been today's <laughs> Hummus Taste Test. We should just do a food taste test every time. Perfect. Uh, but I will mm. now take this chance to move us right along into our weekly segment of Record of the Week. Record of the Week. <laughs> what have you got for us today, I mean, Austin? I want an explosion on everything in my life. We can like add more to the sound track in my head. Uh, well, we were having a nice tour talk, and uh, my my choice was this week for record of the week was an album that we discovered actually together. Uh, if you guys remember on tour, mm-hmm. um, and the album is by a band called Here We Go Magic, uh, and the album is called A Different Ship, and this was a Brooklyn-based band in kind of the early to mid 2000s this album in particular came out i think in 2012 according to the back so this album we were actually checking out a friend's uh studio who mixes the Hembry albums joe vishano good buddy of ours uh, but we were in new york on tour we were popping by his studio and we were literally listening to some fun mixes that he was working on at the time and then he didn't mix this album but he goes i just want to play you something because i think you guys would dig this band and he put on a couple tracks from this album and they had been broken up they are unfortunately a broken up band but uh it resonated with all of us immediately. It didn't help. I mean, it helped that he had probably thirty thousand dollar monitor mixing speakers. Very that nice. We were listening to very nice monitors. Uh, but it really resonated. Uh, and then I remember that next day we were driving from Brooklyn to whatever the next city was, and I put it on my headphones and immediately fell in love. And it's become one of my top five albums. Yeah, I believe of all. it. Was, I believe it was produced by Nigel Godrich. Yes, there's That's a right. great story actually behind this, but. We can get into some other time. Well, no, I think no, you know, that's that's When else are we going to get <laughs> well, into the Here We Go Magic story? This is going to go be the record of the week every week, I thought. Oh. <laughs> no, go uh, into the damn story. Until so, they reunite. So briefly, I'll tell the story. Uh, so Joe, who was the one who recommended, he, he goes, the story I was told was that they were, uh, Here We Go Magic was playing a show in Brooklyn to nobody, and the only people in the room were Tom, and, Tom York and Nigel. And that they just fell in love with this band, and immediately right after the set, Nigel went up and said, "Hey, I want to produce your band." And then that, you know, that's the story. That's a fun story. No one's in the show, kind of a you know, 
dream scenario for any band. Legendary band. I did kind of look. Story, yeah. I did look up the story uh, recently, actually, and it was actually it's still cool. But they were at a festival. They were playing a mm-hmm. festival in in UK, and Tom and Nigel were there watching backstage. And Tom actually was the one who fell in love and said to Nigel, "Hey, I think you should work with these guys." Then Nigel did. Per, uh, approach them through their manager it wasn't exciting as approaching them in person but did approach them and produce this album and it's magic man so it wasn't like a a rock lore like it it wasn't like a dream situation where like they're on the side of the stage and then like nigel's like let's make a record and they like hug and exchange phone numbers it was the classic it goes through your manager through your agent real way there was a connection there they saw it live i think they saw the potential of hey i can make some magic with them and uh and it worked out great record if you haven't heard it it's kind of like a kind of a radiohead vibe for sure but a little more melodic a little more harmonized a little more uh, less dreary, I suppose, yeah, is some of the Radiohead stuff. I took it for a, a spin today also, because you'd said you were going to do this. It reminded me a little bit of another of our favorite bands, Whitest Boy Alive. Yes. Also has a bit of that more modern um, Andy Schaff's band, Fox mm. Warren. That yes. kind of kind of like just like low key melodic, but kind of driving. And the thing that I got the most out of this record was I couldn't, and, and I don't mean this in, in, as a slight, I couldn't like hum back to you a favorite song. Mm-hmm. But taken as a whole, it's a beautiful work of art. But yes. there's not like singles, but the sum of the parts it's are greater. greater than just the individual song. I love it's that. It's an album. It's a real album. So I want to be honest. I I wanted to prepare for this show, and I um, <laughs> he pulled out that album, and my heart sank because I listened to the wrong album. I listened Ooh. to the first album. Was it good? And I want to talk about album. that because I loved it. Great. It was great. It was very raw. Apparently, um, I was just reading about it. It was made on a four track, so not as Hell near yeah. anywhere near as produced as yeah. this, but it had an amazing character and uh, creativity. The way they mis- mix like a uh, folk with like noise and with alternative. And I, I really actually enjoyed oh, the other album. And I do remember we did listen to this one uh, years back, and it's a good reminder to go revisit it again. Yeah. What's great. track? Uh, what the, I, I think there's maybe like one single that stood out above the other ones as far as like being somewhat accessible. Is it track two? May, it's track, well, in the intro is track one. Track three, Make Up Your Mind. Make Up Your great, Mind. great, fun melody. Again, kind of a Radiohead vibe, but a little more... I don't know, just a little more hopeful than a lot of Radiohead yeah. stuff, I think, is. But. Do, you, do you guys know my Nigel story? I probably Ooh, told you guys. Baby, give me the Nigel, Nigel. story. We'll keep it brief, but uh, I was my wife and I were at Austin City Limits Festival. Adams for Peace was playing. Tom mm-hmm. York's side project with Flea. And then whenever you see Tom York, you, you never know if Nigel's going to be there. They're very tight, great collaborators. So we, uh, because of... 100% Music, the podcast, had actually backstage access. Uh, no, just just because we are uh, music industry professionals. <laughs> um, we have some friends that put on the festival, and they were really nice and let us in. That is the actual truth. But we uh, got to go backstage, and we were hanging out, and we saw Flea, who's the bassist in Adam for, Adams for Peace, hanging out backstage. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's Flea, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Alex and Austin love them. You know, <laughs> great, great bass player. So then I'm... I'm hanging out, and Nigel walks back, very, very famous person in the music world, kind of like Josh Freese, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Very famous in the music you, world. You can pick him out of a, a crowd a mile oh, away. so far away. And with that, I mean that just a lot of people don't recognize him. <laughs> yeah. But we're obviously 100% music boys here, so I'm losing my mind because this guy has worked with Beck. He's worked with Radiohead. He mm. is like the producer of producers and always a you know a bucket list producer to work with um so i go up to him i tell him how much his whole career has meant to me and how it's influenced me he's super nice he's like hey you want to go get a drink at the bar well i'm an idiot and i said oh no it's cool man i already have one (laughs) i love that i love that story and then i've never regretted really anything more in my entire life isaac if nigel asks you if you want to get a drink at the bar you 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 say say yes (laughs) (laughs) oh Oh, man you did interrupt uh one time we were at south by southwest walking away and i did see you approach another influence a celebrity mr common Oh yeah, I've got photos to prove it. On his way to the common. Oh, I thought thought that was his last name. Yeah. Actually, it reminds me. 
of another celebrity sighting story. Oh, oh are we going to it? I was using the porta potty backstage at South by Southwest. It's not every day you use a porta potty and swing the door open, and the person in line behind you is common. The common. It's not that common. And yeah, it's not that common. common. He's in line, and and Garrett. It's me, <laughs> common, and Garrett. And uh, so we we basically are like, should we say something to him? And I couldn't resist. So well, and at that point, because I, I had seen, I saw what was about to transpire, and I was like. No, they should not say anything to this man. He's going to the yeah. porta potty, and I, I, I just got to pee. Off. I, well, I walked off. I was like, I can't, I can't watch this. Well, who's got the photo with Common? <laughs> <laughs> not Alex. You came out ahead. You came out ahead. <laughs> just, I just hope you just remember that how uncomfortable he probably was while he was doing. He that. doesn't look super thrilled to take the photos, <laughs> but he, like, he was. Just, he's like, I just want to walk into this nasty porta potty and, and pee myself. right on top yeah. of what you just peed on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but Have you had enough of me? He was super cool, honestly. Yeah. And speaking of uh, celebrities in bathrooms. Oh, yeah, we have. Yeah, okay, we're, we're jumping right back sightings. into uh, celebs. I had a kind of a funny, a funny moment where um, I made very awkward eye contact with Elijah Wood <laughs> because it was like I just wasn't expecting to really see him, and my reaction to him and making eye contact with him was like. I made this goofy grin and we like made eye contact and just like looked away really fast. I felt like such did, a doofus. Did he know that you knew? Oh, it was so bad. It was so it was so embarrassing in this like a split second. I mean, he's probably already yet yeah, like never thought of that again. Yes. Did you see? Uh, final question from me. Did you see what he ordered? What was on his food menu? I I, I did not. What was on his writer? What was on Elijah Wood's writer? Hey, we I'm, saw I, I saw Elijah Wood DJ one time about yeah. ten years ago in Chicago. Music He's related. A DJ. There you go. Now we tied it back in. Music. Music. We always talk music. And we only talk about music. And on speaking this. of, as a nice wrap up, we do have one last music announcement. Mm-hmm. I see on our on our board as we uh, close the episode out. We got a big episode next week. Well, everybody. let's not get too uh, too carried away, knowing how these things go. <laughs> oh, we may <laughs> no, or may no, not. No, let's have. keep let's keep promising giant things because like it'll happen eventually. I think the confidence is a good thing. I do too. That's how you make it in this biz. Yeah, Isaac. Well, who what who are we supposed to have next weekend? <laughs> I've got a text confirming that that Robbie Wolfson and Samson Hellerman of the band that's on a rocket ship to the moon. Ripe are coming on Hembry's 100% Music Oof, Podcast. So excited for this. We love those guys. They are the chillest, coolest, best dudes in the biz. I cannot wait to ask them what's on their rider. Definitely tune in next Tuesday, uh, this coming Tuesday, because that's going to be a great, great app. It's yeah. going to be a great, great app. app. Great oh, app. it's going to be great so app. good. It's going to be a great app. All right. Thanks for tuning in. I think from all of us in Hembry and Garrett, Garrett. Oh, there we will is. see you on the flip side. As we say, see you on the flip side. That's our new we, motto. No, we'll see you at the Goo Goo Dolls concert. See you at the Goo Goo Dolls concert. <laughs> see Goo Goo Dolls. 100% music. Music. Music.